Hello and welcome back to Let's Play Deadfire with me, Bring It Down. Let's drop off Baron and Hasango. Adair looks up expectantly as Baron disembarks Aegis without a word to anyone. Baron begins to head off, staring straight ahead with sunken eyes, and doesn't break stride when he passes Adair. Bairn. The boy has taken another several steps before he seems to have heard anything at all. When he stops, he doesn't turn to face Adair at first, as though keeping his options open. A long moment passes, then, with persisting hesitation, he turns. I'm not sure what you want to talk about. I have my life, and I know it's because of you. I know I should be thanking you, but the truth is... I don't know if I want to be here now, or what I'm supposed to be doing. And I still don't know what to say to Aethys when I meet him one day. It should be the other way around. He's the one owes you an explanation. Baron avoids Adair's gaze. You hear me, kid? He owes you. Baron gives an absent nod, still looking down, and says no more. Not in much of a mood to talk, if you don't mind. Something I can do? What's on your mind? Huh? Yeah? You must gather your party before venturing forth. Okay, well I'm sure Adair has something else to say about that. Just not yet. Back to Nekataka, and we'll speak to the Queen. Let's see if uh, Prince Arihi has anything to say. Akira, but I hear whispers that you visited the Hazanui's Adra Lighthouse and survived. Arihi smiles, stroking his chin. Too much has happened for you to waste words with the royal brother. From now on, you work with Onikaza as an honored guest of her rooftop garden. Only, be kind to her cats. I had some questions. If you have questions, the royal brother will hear you. I've read all this before. Yeah. My scouts tell me that you sail from Oriokoiki. The queen raises her brow. My brother calls the Wahaki the last true Juana. He's severe on the Kahanga, but I do not call him wrong. Onikaza thumbs her chin and nods. You dealt with them peacefully on Motare Okozi. I am hoping you can make lightning strike a second time. The tribe hates all foreigners. Passing ships are attacked on sight, 
and explorers never make it back to the beach. Before you rely too heavily on Wahaki support, you should know they consider me an enemy. I need allies, Watcher. For what do you bring me foul omens? With reluctance, she signals an attendant to pay you. Oh, lost negative reputation. We need to be stronger than this, I say. When Ikaza brings her fist down on her armrests, her tigers raise their heads. Say nothing. Ngati frowns on the Kahanga. This was a trial, a test of our fealty to the old ways. We failed her, I say. I will not fail her twice. A queen's work is not outdone by misfortune, and I am ready for her next trial. Many of Onekaza's attendants smile and bob their heads in support. Prayer and the wisdom of Kohopa will help steer my next course. I will send for you in time. Onekaza dismisses you with a wave. I had other questions. Speak freely, Herald of Bereth. Sure. Okay, so it was just for the Wahaki quest. So, I'm wondering if I'd spoken to Onikaza before doing Brookspur, and then turning it into the Wahaki. If maybe the Royal Deadfire Company wouldn't have taken over Crookspur, maybe the Juana could have. My brothers and sisters have set sail for Nekataka. I thought the tribes needed them to calm the weather. A greater storm surrounds this place. We must answer the call of the Kahanga. If the outsiders do not trample us first, the Green God will surely do it for them. Do not speak this way, my love. Well, in that case, we're pretty limited as far as quests go. So I guess we'll just leave Nakataka, take a look at the map, and see what we can do. There is always the mega bosses. The burn book grows warm in your pack. That's not voice acted. But how my siblings preened and postured after the events of Hasango became no closer to consensus. I cannot stomach such disorder. You didn't need to reignite the Audra Lighthouse. Aethys had already gone. You could have tracked him to his next destination, but you opted to help the colony instead. Why? A payment, reward, the usual. Acting on self-interest alone is a purely mortal quality. At least you're honest about it. I notice my brother's frozen corner of the beyond is quieter than usual. The doors of the Veep Mouth have slammed shut. You made it out of the White Void intact. Has anything you witnessed on the other side informed your opinion of the mortal world, Watcher? <laughs> Option 4. I learned the extent of Ngwithin treachery from King Wingaru over Watori. Oh, the first. So you have. Is it any wonder that the Huana don't pay us the same homage as Glenfothans? Their ancestral memory is thick with resentment. Anything else? I saw how gods and mortals can cooperate through Widewind's eyes. If you can call that cooperation, as long as you realize that mortals are tools to serve our ends, I will not call your lesson waste wasted. Okay, I disagree with that. 
Anything else? Noxiva X Current. Show me how time erodes one's purpose. That is only true to a point. We built the wheel to strengthen mortal essence, and every passage through the cycle enriches the life that comes after. Ramagon takes a different approach. The White Void is a celebration of decay. Prisoners like Naxiva have experienced more uninterrupted memory than a single lifetime is built to contain. It's no surprise that she would fray at the seams. Anything else? I'm just happy to be warm again. Of that, I have little doubt. Remember what you've learned. It may not save your life, but mortals could do worse than enjoy a broadened perspective. I did not expect the Wahaki to bend the knee to a Kahanga ruler. Perhaps changes are coming to the archipelago faster than I anticipated. This is a pleasing shift of fortunes. Submission to rightful authority is the only natural conclusion when the alternative is war and death. I hope that is a lesson mortals remember. I already know the storms wreathing Pokokahara have gone still. We felt the change ripple through the beyond. With the essence restored, the region has a chance to heal and eventually thrive. Time will tell if that is what the dead fire actually needs. My instincts were correct, and you're not content to let matters sit undisturbed. Good. I'll continue observing your progress. So, you kill that upstart pirate and put an end to his delusions of grandeur. Bravo. I thought I might chide you for slaying a ruthless and effective leader, but something about righteous vengeance always brings a smile to my face. If you desire answers, look no further. I have several. Now it's voice acted. I feel like we've already talked about all this. Uh, tell me about this enlightened society you once wanted. Yeah, I'm pretty sure we've spoken about all of this. I'm not 100% if there's new dialogue or not, since it's not grayed out. Uh, close the book. We'll speak again. Wodica nods stiffly. You feel her presence drift as a breeze, rustling as it goes. Huh? Right. Oh, there's this whole island over here we didn't explore. I think we've done all the other islands except for the ones with the... Super bosses on them. So I guess we'll head over here. How do I land? I'm not really sure. Let's go check out the uh, deck of many things real quick, since they're right here. We have a lot of money, that might be something worth buying. 
So I don't remember any of the items available being particularly great. I think most of them had a drawback. Also, I have not been using yeah. the deck of many things. Or sorry, endless possibilities. They mix huh. it up. Ah, though, and well, might I interest you in a new cloak? I will fetch my chalk. So plus three accuracy might be worth it. That's interesting as well. Finding everything to your liking, Captain. Nothing but the best. We do have a lot of money. This might be worth it. How much does it cost, though? Only 3300 Well, let's see if we can't steal stuff first. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We can lockpick everything now, too. Something I can do. Oh, nice and quiet. Huh? Something I can do. Not quite good enough. Hmm? I guess we'll throw it over here instead. Yes? I'll see what I can do. It is done. Shoot. This guy parked himself in an inconvenient spot. But it's unlocked now. In fact, I think we can lockpick everything without aggroing the ship, so let's do that first. I'll see what I can find. I'll see what I can do. It is done. I shall be discreet. I'll see what I can do. <laughs> the work of a moment. Okay, things unlocked. Now it's just a matter of throwing our spark crackers into the correct positions. I? Indeed. It might be easier to steal this first. Nice and quiet. Hmm? Well, something I can do. Of course. Nice. Well, this one, on the other hand, be a little bit more difficult because this one guard keeps trolling back, and then this guy. I'll see what I can uh. find. Hmm. Doesn't seem to move far enough away. What if I throw it all the way over here? How may I help? Yes, yeah, so we can steal all the unique items. That's pretty crazy. Of course. And also pretty exciting. How may I help? I shall be discreet. What do you need? How may I? Oh man. Not quite far enough. There's something I can do. All right, that's not a good spot. How may I help? Oh, is it the people up there Indeed. that are seeing him? I think it is. Hmm? Oh, 
Oh, that's an aura. It's a belt, though. Indeed. Well, still, this is going How pretty may I well. Help? Nice and quiet. They made just enough spark crackers. Alright, so I have to go through all these unique items again to see what what they do. But cool, we got everything. Feels pretty good. Come a long way because previously we couldn't even lockpick those chests. Oh yeah, we didn't speak about Hasango, so we need to go back and yeah, we only spoke about the Oahaki. Son of a gun. <laughs> Forgot what I was there to talk to her about. So maybe we skipped ahead. Maybe the Wahaki quest is after the Hasango quest. Which is what I suspected when I talked about it earlier. I didn't realize we didn't speak about Hasango at all. Well still, that was a very lucrative misadventure, so no harm done. Let's take a look at all of our new items. Midnight Wish. Channels lunar energy into a localized source of power, regenerating the health of allies in the air of effect, and granting a minor bonus to all defenses. The same as Moonwell. Also gives minus 5% recovery time for 6 seconds on critical hit. Also very good. What does he have? Uh, that's pretty solid, too. I like that. Hmm. Minus eight intellect. So, I don't think Adair really needs intellect. He doesn't have a lot of AoE. So it should impact his regeneration from uh, Lathandria's devotion. So I don't know if I want to impact that or not. It's only resistances. There's no immunity here, so I don't know if it's worth grabbing. It's only once per rest. So it calls down a shaft of intense sunlight, burning and potentially blinding those caught in the air of effect. And Dawn's Reflection. Oh, 10% chance to reflect against spells. That's really good. Hmm. I will go through those. I'll probably go through those off camera and decide what I want to equip. Because there's a lot of them and they're more nuanced items since a lot of them do have drawbacks. I think I'll take up too much time trying to figure it out on camera. You return intact. 
Nagati is not always kind to those who travel upon her domain. Onikaza touches her brow, her brow, <laughs> her brow, and nods. <laughs> oh, that typo. Okay. My brother speaks of your journey from Matare Okozi. Mostly, he mourns the loss of his expedition. Onikaza looks out on the city and sighs through her nose. Scholars pour over your findings as if a charcoal rubbing could build a bridge to Ukaizo. I have learned to restrain my optimism. Right, so now we're talking about the quest that Aruihi gave us. Still not talking about Hasango. A messenger from the jaws of Tangaloa speaks with the voice of wisdom and change, I say. She raises her brows at you. It is fitting that yours should be the voice that tells of Hasongo's fate. What did you see there? Samnaga occupied the colony after Aethys drained the Audra. I let them live. The snakes are on edge. Where comes this new boldness? Onikaza thumbs her chin and narrows her eyes. Far be it for me to complain if they make trouble for outsiders. There is a wariness to her thoughts that she doesn't bother to hide. What of Aethys? If you know why he terrorizes the Deadfire, speak on. The Queen nods. He makes for Magrin's teeth, but I believe that is only a waypoint. Tapping her chin, Onikaza nods and weighs the matter. At length, her even expression spreads into a pleased and knowing smile. If Aethys makes for Magrin's teeth, I say the Rathun will grind him to dust for the praise of their warrior matron. I don't think that worked out for them. <laughs> we already paid that place a visit. Her brow rises with interest. Even if they fail, it will be an enemy cleared from my plate. This is the gratitude of Nagati, I say. Rathun. The fiery children of Magrin devoted to their mother with a fanatic zeal. Bothersome, but the least of my troubles now. From Port Maje to Hasongo to Magrin's teeth, Aethys follows a rich vein of Adra. It takes him northeast to more interesting territory. In the deepest memory of the tribes, we have told stories of Magrin's teeth. Embellished sailors' fables, Akira, but not without some truth. My people speak of treacherous seas, lakes of fire, and the ancient warriors hammered to life on Magrin's anvil. Onikaza props her chin on her fist and looks you up and down. Ashen Maw is the grandest and most accessible of the peaks. It is the sharpest tooth in Magrin's jaw. Prepare yourself for a fight. I will, Highness. If you make preparations in Nekataka, I say we can help each other. She sits up straighter and regards you with a level expression. I must keep the city's peace, and I have only so many arms and eyes. While the dead fire screams, I would see Nekataka outlast the storm to come. What do you need from me? What I need is a lasting peace that will outlive my dynasty. But I will accept peace of mind for now. What do you know of my water shapers, Herald of Bereth? Onikaza leans forward and rests her chin on her fist. I know they gave Rawatai no end of trouble in their early advance. Akira, if you recall history, then you know why I am protective over the guild. My water shapers are the levy holding back Rawatai's advance. An adept standing at the prow of a war canoe is enough to send the fleet scrambling for the shallows. She eases back, languid and satisfied. This reminds me. I owe the Hazanui a basket of koiki in remembrance of the Battle of Nakaroatl. She snaps her fingers and nods to an attendant who scurries off. Poking the hornet's nest. That is Aruihi's job, but Akira, there is a side of diplomacy which I enjoy. Onikaza winks. While the problems of Aethys and overindulgent admirals plague these waters, I have summoned the masters of water shaping to Nekataka. So I've heard. I think every NPC who walked past mentioned it. Now would be the time to confer with Guildmaster Mairu, but she does not answer my summons. 
Onikaza looks out on her city. Pan squeezes down on the armrest. Do you think something is wrong? It is too early to grow a forest from this coconut, but I would not dispatch you if I felt at ease. The guild can suffer no setbacks. If Myru shirks her duties, her queen would know the reason. She stares off into the distance and sighs, her gaze unfixed. Nagati, do not abandon us now. When Ikaza turns her gaze back to you and flinches, this was not a thought she intended to share. The shadow under Nekataka. That's right, there was that dungeon under the Water Shapers Guild the we couldn't access yet. Friends of Rawatai are rarely friends of the throne, but I will hear you. Interesting. I think out of all the leaders of the various factions, Onikaza is my favorite. But we've also had the least interaction with her, I think. Because then you have the Hazanui, you have the two pirate leaders, Ferrante and Aldis. And then there's Castle, who I'm, in general, just not impressed with. Not to mention he works with slavers. Alright, I'm going to call it here. Uh, next time we will go check out the Water Shapers Guild. And at some point, we'll figure out how to land on that one island to About the west. About a lava. I'm sorry. She must have meant a real lot to you. Well, more than I knew. Less than she deserved. But that's all past now. For a moment there, I thought her son might have been mine. It's a shame he wasn't. You would have been good to him. Good for him, too. When I heard, I didn't think I was ready. And then I thought, maybe I was. Alright, we call it here for now. Thanks for watching. Hope to see you guys in the next one.